Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Pasha, B'nai Israel are marching out of Egypt, free at last, uh, no longer slaves to the Egyptians. But as they are on their way out, they see, they sense that Pharaoh and his army are taking off after them in hot pursuit. People get to, start to get worried. Some even ask to go back to Egypt. They'd rather be slaves to Egypt than be killed by Pharaoh's army. And Moshe Rabbeinu tells them uh, not to worry. He says, Ki asheri temet hayom, rotam od ad olam. We're never going to see them again like this. They never, you don't worry. They're not going to catch up to us, and we're through with them. Now, it sounds like simply a, a simple statement of reassurance. But the Ramban, the Moshe ben Nachman, begins his commentary on the, on the Pasuk by saying, that Chazal considered this to be a real mitzvah, a real prohibition, the Dorot, a permanent part of the Jewish tradition. Uh, now, he obviously didn't mean this totally, literally, because he didn't count it among the 613 commandments. Uh, in, the Ramban wrote an incisive, creative, and sharp commentary on the Rambam's Sefer Mitzvot, where the Rambam enumerates his list of 613 commandments, and the Ramban uh, criticizes him on both theoretical and legal grounds, and comes up with a slightly different count, but didn't count this as the mitzvah. And in fact, he says that even though this is like the prohibition uh, uh, that the king may not acquire horses, because the Torah says if he if he king wants to have a huge you know stock of horses, uh, then this will force him to go down to Egypt, uh, where which, was, which in the ancient times was where p people would go to buy horses, and this would lead the Jews to return to Egypt. Ramam says that prohibition, which comes in Sefer Devarim, is mitzvah be'emet. So this means that that that, that the that this so-called mitzvah Dorot is not a mitzvah be'emet, but it's still something that has some sort of force, some sort of meaning. We have to look to try to see if we can find the sources and the real meaning behind this uh, apparent uh, prohibition. Well, the source is as apparently in the Gemara and Sukkah, both in the Bavli, but especially in the Rishami, at the beginning of the fifth parak of, 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 of Masechet Sukkah, where we hear in the name of Reb Shun Bar Yochai, uh, something that seems more like, to me anyway, a Midrash Agada than a legal disquisition. He says that three times we find in the Torah uh, the Jews being warned not to return to Egypt. Three times the Jews did return to Egypt, and each of these times, it led to a disaster. So it sounds more like a, a, a Midrash Agada, and not some sort of thing that we call a Mitzvah Adoro. Nonetheless, the Rambam in Hilchot Malachim, at the very end of his Mishnah Torah, brings as a binding halacha that Jews are not allowed to reside in Egypt. He says the Jews, Jew can live anywhere in the world except for Egypt. Something which sounds very strange to all of us because the Rambam himself lived in Egypt. That's a separate issue I won't get into now. But the Meforshim, the Nosei Kelim, those who look for the source of the Mishnah Torah, because you know, the Rambam didn't cite sources there, those look for sources say that the source for this prohibition is in fact those Gemaras and Sukkah that speak about the, the uh, prohibition of returning to Egypt. So we have to ask, ask again, what does this mean? Like ask a glyph.